Welcome to Lifestyle with Neeraj. I selected the Porsche Macan S for a clear reason. I already had a 2019 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, so I wanted a vehicle with a car-like ride but with full winter capability. The Macan has filled these requirements admirably. It is thrilling to drive on both multi-lane highways and twisty country roads. It can get to your destination without the driver fatigue that you may experience with other SUVs. In other words, this is a, an SUV that can easily substitute for a car. However, I did discover several quirks that sometimes leave me frustrated. Let us go over some of them. We will use the Rubicon as the reference. One of the big drawing cards for the 2020 Macan was the improved and wider infotainment screen. However, a drawback has been that the center air vents have become rather small. They are placed lower than they were in previous models, making them less effective in sending a breeze to the face level. The fan is also not powerful enough. The Wrangler, in contrast, has well-placed vents with a powerful fan. It will also heat up the Jeep quickly, even on cold days. Voice control functions are very limited. You can use voice control to make phone calls, select the radio station, or ask navigation for directions, but that is about it. It cannot set the cabin temperature, fan speed, or display recent phone calls. All these can be easily performed in the Jeep using voice control. The hazard sensors, when you are in reverse mode, have limited capability. They cannot sense an object that is, say, 30 or 40 feet away. In contrast, the Jeep Wrangler sensors, when equipped with rear cross path detection, are extremely sensitive in picking up moving objects at that distance. The Jeep provides you with the feeling of confidence when you are reversing. Of course, the driver should also use the rear view camera image and look around as well. The blind spot detector feature in the Macan simply lights up when the car detects another automobile. When you apply the turn signal in this situation, the same light will flash. This can be ad inadequate if the driver is busy watching other traffic around him and not paying complete attention to the direction he wants to turn. The Jeep system not only displays a light, but it also sends a loud auditory signal when the turn signal is applied, warning you that a car is in your path. This combination of dual warnings is highly effective in preventing mishaps on the road. One of the biggest safety features after the adoption of seat belts has been the collision warning system and autonomous braking. This was not a standard feature in the 2020 Macan. There are cars that cost a fraction of the price of the Porsche that provide this important feature. In order to get this feature, which is called Porsche Active Safe or PASS, one has to order the Adaptive Cruise Control System, which equips the vehicle with a camera mounted in the front wheel. This option ends up costing 1300 Canadian dollars. Both the Adaptive Cruise Control and Front Collision Detection Systems and automatic braking are also available on the Rubicon. The forward-facing camera in the Rubicon appears to have an exceptional field of view. It will even warn the driver of cyclists on the side of the road. The backup camera on the Macan is located just above the rear license plate, whereas this camera in the Jeep is situated much higher in the spare tire mount. The backup camera gets covered with mud and snow quickly in snowfalls or on slushy roads, rendering it useless. In contrast, this camera continues to provide excellent views in inclement weather conditions in the Jeep. The navigation system has very limited functionality in many respects. It does not show all the roads around the car at a glance whereas the Jeep continually provides this information as you drive. This information is necessary, especially when you are in an unfamiliar part of town. The line marking the highway in the Macan navigation system in a rural setting is faint yellow against a pink background, making it impossible to see at a glance. 
The Jeep navigation system displays roads clearly as any navigation system should. The mini navigation screen in the dash shows the road that you are driving on but does not provide the name of the upcoming road until you, you are almost at the intersection. By that time, in many cases, you can look, at, look up and read the signpost for yourself. This limits the usefulness of the system. The 2020 Macan has done away with the fog lights. The company states that the fog lamps are integrated into the headlamps. I'm not sure what that means. For instance, the Jeep has independent fog lights controlled by the driver, which do a fabulous job of lighting up the road in adverse driving conditions. The collision mitigation system in the Macan is not active until the driver selects for it as part of the memory seat setting. One cannot assume that it is working when you purchase the car and start driving. You have to go into the menu and select for it. It seems to me that this feature is far too important to allow drivers to operate the car without it, especially after they have paid for it. The volume selector knob has specific settings and I find that the music is either too soft or too loud. Compare this with the volume control in the Jeep. It is smooth throughout its excursion and has infinite settings, which allows the driver to choose the volume level precisely to suit themselves. Another drawback is that the Macan does not give a numerical readout of the volume level, whereas the Jeep does. When the air conditioning and heating systems are off and you have the car fan on at the low setting, you would be expecting to bring outside air at the ambient outdoor temperature into the cabin. In fact, the car will continue to do so for a while. However, at some point in time, which I have not been able to predict accurately, the car will switch to hot air. For example, you would be driving around on a fine day with an outside temperature of 21 Celsius and you set the system for, for fresh air from the outside, you will discover that the car sends in heated air instead at some point during the drive. I approached the Porsche dealership about this. I have never encountered this issue in any car that I have owned previously. The mechanics ran a full diagnostic check and did not come up with any code indicating a defect. The technician recorded the temperature of the air coming in from the vents and it was 37 to 39 Celsius, even though the outside temperature was 21 Celsius. Finally, they let me a new Mucanas for the afternoon to try and we discovered the same issue. So this appears to be a normal finding in this vehicle. The solution of course is to run the air conditioning all the time and auto set the temperature that you want. I am not sure what this will do to the fuel economy. The front camera which is located outside the vehicle sometimes gets covered with condensation or dirt which prevents it from working. In contrast, the camera in the Jeep is located behind the rear view mirror on the windshield inside. It never malfunctions at that location. The storage bins located in the front doors are composed of hot plastic, which is fine. The issue is that there are large speakers alongside the bins. Objects that are placed inside the bins vibrate when music is played. Only soft objects such as gloves are acceptable. The solution is potentially simple. These bins could have been lined with a soft rubber compound. The vehicle specifies an octane rating of 93S mark on the filler door. The highest octane available in Nova Scotia is 91. As a general rule, one should not use an octane level lower than the one specified for the vehicle. 
Doing so can reduce performance and lead to deposits inside engine components. Many of us may not realize that the octane rating system used in Europe is different from the one in North America. The numbers run higher for the same fuel in Europe. The number provided on the Macan is an average of the research octane number and the motor octane number or ROM plus MON divided by 2. This reflects the system used in Canada, the States and Brazil. It is sometimes useful to deselect a phone from the infotainment system when someone is on the call. Of course, this can be performed on the phone itself. I have not been able to find a quick method to accomplish this in the Macan. It can be done easily in the Rubicon. The button for heating the steering wheel is located behind the lowest point of the steering wheel. It is easy to turn it on inadvertently at this location. It is situated on the dashboard in the Jeep. This button could easily have been clearly placed on the console along with the array of other buttons. You cannot use voice command to heat the steering wheel in either car. There is no lumbar support for the front seat passengers in the Porsche. Again, this is totally unacceptable at this price point. I have to use Siri to send messages in the Porsche by long pressing voice command. In contrast, one can send predefined messages using the Jeep Ford system as well as messages through Siri. The Rubicon allows the driver to activate the rear view camera using the menu on the infotainment system. This function is not available on the Macan. There are inexplicable spaces in the steering wheel which could have easily accommodated the cruise controls. Instead, the cruise control system is located in a hidden position behind the steering wheel. It is not only difficult to access it, but also impossible to read the instructions. 